So the third thing that needs to happen is you tell it to VLAN. So I like to think of the service profile as this, it's kind of like this, again, it's, it's this shell or a construct where I'm gonna where I'm gonna put uh, variables that are unique to this connection. So in this case, the VLAN is what will be unique to this connection. But before any of that happens, the LOA CFA gets uploaded, and then that tells our technicians to go run this cable. So once this cable is run, the second thing that will happen as part of the workflow is service profile gets instantiated, and then the VLAN gets assigned, and this connection, I'm going to uh, split the ECX switch in half right now. This connection, these connection attributes on the right-hand side, or on, on, sorry, on this side of the switch, going out to the MPLS provider, get, get plugged into the workflow. Because the ECX switch, its main job is to manipulate, in the, in the context of Network Edge, is to take a VNI, a VXLAN network identifier on this side, which is how the Network Edge uh, layer two constructs get instantiated up to the switch, and translate that into a VLAN on the carrier side of the, of the equation. So, so in this case, what would happen is to stitch it all together, the customer would go out, they would talk to CenturyLink. In this case, it could be any provider, must be tagged, and then that provider is going to give them the attributes. Um, so they'll say, you know, here's a here's a, a dot one Q circuit, and on that dot one Q circuit, the VLAN ID, and we're going to sign in this case is VLAN 100. So what the customer does is when they run the workflow, when they do the workflow, they will give it all these other parameters that they've got from the customer. And they'll also give it VLAN 100. This is uh, an important thing that, that they need to give them because what's going to happen is this VNI, the VXLAN network identifier on this side, say it gets assigned 7410, and the VLAN on this side gets assigned uh, 100. The ECX switch's job is to take 7410 and VLAN 100 and translate those two back and forth as it traverses the ECX switch. A real quick uh, <clears throat> explanation on the VXLAN network identifier on the network edge side. When you spin up a network edge device, um, each interface has a VXLAN uh, network identifier, VNI associated with it. So in this case, say this was gig three on a, on a CSR router, for example. Doesn't matter, all the interfaces will get assigned a, 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 a VNI identifier. In this case, VLAN three was assigned 7410. It's already pre-plumbed into the switch. You don't need to do anything to, uh, to configure it. It's already done behind the scenes. So when a customer goes in and they, and they configure uh, this connection across this infrastructure, they're going to uh, connect gig three. And then they're going to say gig three connect to this service profile and then use VLAN 100. So what that'll do is on the ECX switch, gig three has 7410 associated with it again. And then on this side, <clears throat> when the 7410, when a frame hits the ECX switch, it has a VNI 7410, it's gonna push that frame off and then tag it with VLAN 100. VLAN 100, the ECX switch knows, is part of this construct going all the way out. So if you build it out completely on this PE, VLAN 100 comes in on this PE, and then a sub-interface gets assigned, potentially, however they want to configure it on their side, it really doesn't matter, but say, say it's gig five. So gig five, 100, and then gig three, so gig five and gig three get stitched together from a layer two underlay, just like this, again, with 7410 on this side, VLAN 100 on this side, and the ECX switch is just translating this back and forth to build a layer two underlay. Once a layer two underlay is built, then you're ready to apply layer three, and then pairing, BGP pairing, or whatever type of pairing that you want to, that you want to build on the circuit. So this is bring your own connection. This is how everything gets instantiated. Again, uh, basically three steps. Customer orders a circuit, they get the LOA, they upload the LOA into the workflow. As part of the workflow, a service profile gets created and the customer plugs in the VLAN information in the workflow. 
when the service profile is spun up is, or gets created as part of the workflow, VLAN 100 gets assigned to it. And that's what assigns VLAN 100 all the way down to whatever you're pairing with on this side to build a layer two connection. On this side, uh, BNI gets assigned to uh, an interface. In this case, 7410 got assigned to gig three, 7410, 100, translates back and forth. I've built the layer two underlay. Once layer two underlay is built, I can build layer three and BGP pairing. Again, cannot stress this enough, that service must be tagged, must be tagged. If it's not tagged, not a lot we can do to help a customer out of that situation. They've got to bring a tag circuit because again, the ECX switch must have a, must see a frame that's tagged. If it's using a tag frame, it's going to drop it. Last uh, question that, that we get asked a lot, a uh, customer will, will, will ask us, okay, which IBX do we order to? My rule of thumb is always go in this order, uh, standard cross-connect, campus cross-connect, and metro cross-connect. And you want to figure out the location relative to the ECX switch, not where network edge is deployed because the, the connection is going to be terminated on the ECX switch. So it matters where ECX is, not necessarily where network edge is. So again, my, my rule of thumb, they can bring it in anywhere and our job is to backhaul it, no matter which, if we use standard or campus or metro cross connect, our job is to backhaul it from the DMARC to the ECX switch that our technicians will run the cable. To me, it's just simpler, um, you know, to go standard campus and metro. But again, any, anyone will work. Uh, that's just my own rule of thumb. So that's the way a bring your own connection is, uh, is established. Um, and it would really be in your best interest to know this because about 60, 70% of the connections on network edge uh, or 60, 70% of the customers that, that instantiate a network edge device do a bring your own connection because obviously they want to connect it back to to their own, their own network, in this case, Central like MPLS. And again, it doesn't matter, it doesn't, doesn't have to be MPLS, it can be any service that must be tagged. So you can bring a, you know, a, a DIA circuit, you can bring a point-to-point -point private line to it, as long as it's tagged, you're golden. So that's it, that's how a bring your own connection is established, the layer two control plane is built, so you can start building VGP carrying over.